Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and Venom 3's official title is Venom The Last Dance, and it's now coming two weeks earlier, just in time for Halloween on October 25th. So what the hell does this title mean? And based on various clues from Tom Hardy on social media and Sony's weird plan that they've been hinting at in their movies, including Across the Spider-Verse, is Venom 3 confirmed to be a dance with the other Venoms who share these 80 billion light years of hive knowledge across universes? Will our tiny little brains explode when all Eddie Brock's all hit that Donna Summer needle drop at the same time. So let's dance. The last dance. I'm sorry, no more singing in this video. This week, Sony and Columbia Studios confirmed that the third Venom film will indeed be titled Venom The Last Dance, which is actually a phrase Tom Hardy has been using in various social media posts for months now. And we just assumed he was using the phrase generally, or maybe like a nod to the ESPN Netflix documentary series about the 1997-98 Bulls season. But if you looked at these social media images from Tom Hardy on the set of Venom 3, Venom The Last Dance, Tom is wearing the exact same outfit, the Hawaiian overshirt with the Golden State Warriors The City t-shirt that he was wearing in the post credit scene of Venom Let There Be Carnage, when he and Venom teleported across the multiverse into the MCU, and in the post credit scene of Spider-Man No Way Home when he teleported back and left a piece of Venom goo behind. This confirms that the third Venom film will pick up directly with Eddie's multiverse trip that was preceded with this interesting exchange. We all have a past, Eddie. Wait, are you hiding stuff from me? Eddie! Light years of hive knowledge across universes would explode your tiny little brain. And we're still waiting for answers on what exactly Venom meant by that. Now, in recent months before Madame Web, I made a video speculating what exactly Sony's Ultimate Spider-Verse plan would be based on my lingering question of what triggered Eddie and Venom's multiverse transfer since they seemed to be entering that MCU hotel room right when Peter was on TV in Manhattan. My argument then being that that moment happened happened before Peter went to visit Doctor Strange in the Sanctum Sanctorum to conduct that Runes of Cough Call spell that opened the rifts to the multiverse. And since Eddie and Venom transferred to the MCU before that spell happened, something else must have brought them to the MCU. Now, the response I got when I said that was that the Daily Bugle broadcast could just be showing old B-roll from like a past moment, and that Eddie and Venom's transference could have still been synced with Peter and Strange's spell that just happened months after that. Sure, sure, I'll concede that point, but really, we would be talking about several months later. J. Jonah Jameson initially outed Peter Parker as Spider-Man in the summertime. That was right after Peter returned from his summer European trip in Spider-Man Far From Home, which was then in the opening act of Spider-Man No Way Home, followed by months and months of bad press and legal drama with the DODC, which then took Peter in that movie to late October, early November, like we still saw Halloween decorations in MJ's cafe. And at that point, Matt Murdock had gotten the DODC to drop the charges and Peter now pivoted to focus on applying to college. And at that point, Peter visited the Sanctum Sanctorum in November of that year. So yes, while it is possible that Peter Parker would be on TV in this hotel room in the month of November, and for Mexico in the month of November to have this warm tropical feel, because Mexico has warm weather year round, if Peter's legal drama had kind of settled down several months later, I would just be pretty surprised that the Daily Bugle would still be covering the moment of his unmasking as if it was still breaking news, and that this broadcast would still be getting international reach all the way to this Mexican hotel room. Yeah, I just think this moment was implied to be either on the day or a few days after at most after Peter was unmasked in the summertime, which would mean it would still be several months before Peter went to the sanctum to disrupt that spell to create these multiverse rifts. Now, why am I so obsessed with the timeline here? Well, I've always been obsessed with the timeline goofiness when it comes to Venom movies. Look no further than what is now one of New Rockstar's biggest thumbnail memes, six months, and which back in 2018, I broke down how the hell it would have taken Riot six months to travel from Malaysia to San Francisco as the 2018 Venom movie wants us to believe. And to all my six month sickos on Twitter, on April 25th, six months before Venom 3's new release date, we will riot. But the reason I'm obsessed with the timing of Eddie and Venom's transfer is that I believe the exact trigger of their crossover to the MCU is still a bit of a mystery. And I think the reason we're all still asking questions about that is that seemingly nothing 
nothing has really been revealed about the point of this transfer so far eddie and venom just went to the mcu in the post credit scene of venom let there be carnage which came out a few months before spider-man no way home and then eddie and venom spent all of spider-man no way home just hanging out in a bar in mexico and then they just transferred back to their home reality yes they did leave a bit of venom goo in the mcu but how really would that impact eddie's journey at all why would sony just give a gift to the mcu reality like that with nothing for eddie to bring back with him well i propose to you in this video that eddie did bring something back with him and that's what we will explore in this third venom movie we know from these set photos that eddie's dance with the multiverse is not over that there are still secrets about venom's 80 billion light years of hive knowledge across universes that will soon explode eddie's little brain and i know it sounds crazy but i think the last dance of this third movie's title might refer to a kind of cosmic ballet with venoms in other universes and that this movie might finally explain why in 2007 spider-man 3 peter parker while he was infected with the venom symbiote did this weird iconic dance Now, we shouldn't forget that in September, Sony posted and then quickly deleted a TikTok mashup of Tom Hardy and Topher Grace's Venom fighting. Make of that what you will, but in like 2020, 2021, clues just like this were how fans began to hype up the fact that the third MCU Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man No Way Home, would feature Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. I think it was December 2020 when Sony Latin America posted a similar promo video that featured Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker, Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker, alongside Tom Holland's Peter Parker. We also know that Sony Sony as a studio is pretty obsessed with referencing Tobey Maguire's goofy dancing and his finger guns from the 2007 film. Finger guns come up in the PS4 game, and 2018's animated Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse shows Peter B. Parker reenacting it. Spider-Man No Way Home has the three Peters restaging the pointing meme. Sony just loves to come off like it has this cool meta relationship with the way the internet digests their Spider-Man movies. But I think the studio misses the fact that Sam Raimi directed Tobey to do that to lean into the camp and into the cringe believing that what Peter Parker thinks is cool is something we all cringe at. Like we forget that Sam Raimi included shots of all the women that Peter points those finger guns at are completely disgusted with him. Emo Peter Parker is meant to be kind of his psychotic break from reality. It's a symbiote doing an impression of cool human behavior filtered through Peter Parker's pathetic nerdy ego. Today's video is sponsored by Blue Chew. If you've ever felt like you could use a little help with intimacy, vigor, standing at attention, having the strength of an oak tree. <laughs> Choose whatever euphemism you like, Blue Chew can help. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night. That way you can plan ahead or be ready for whenever an opportunity arises. It's super easy to do. Just sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And it's all done online. That means no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. If you're skeptical or don't think that you need it, try it free for a month and see. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our audience. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code NEWROCKSTARS at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code NEWROCKSTARS to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring our channel. Really, there are so many deeper layers to Tobey Maguire's psychology in playing Spider-Man that the fandom doesn't properly understand, in my opinion. And we have a special video in the works exploring what if Sam Raimi did direct a fourth Tobey Maguire Spider-Man film in 2011. It is the second episode of our What If pilot series, and it's an insane video that goes into the dark secrets of Hollywood for the past 30 years. This video is coming soon, I think in the next week. You are going to love it. But Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse included in Miguel O'Hara's Web of Life and Destiny display a web node that showed the canon event of infections by a Venom symbiote. We specifically see Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker, in the 2007 film the moment he yanks the symbiote off his face in that church bell tower. The implication of that is that Sony considers Venom symbiotes to be part of their arachno-humanoid poly multiverse, because in so many universes, symbiotes do latch onto spider entities first and use that step to create Venom thereafter. And because that canon event happens in several universes, it's considered a canon event 
event for all universes, but it was not a canon event in Tom Hardy's universe. Venom latched onto him directly without taking a Spider-Man step. And that, we have to admit, is a weird thing. So if Eddie and Venom's MCU trip in that Let There Be Carnage post credit scene and the return in Spider-Man No Way Home's post credit scene is setting up part of the plot of Venom The Last Dance and have set images from this movie show Eddie in that same outfit that he was wearing during those transferences, we have to assume The Last Dance is going to reveal something about Venom's multiversal hive knowledge and Venom's connection to the Spider-Verse and give Tom Hardy Eddie a glimpse at least into other multiversal instances in which a Venom tangoed with a human, which could include Topher Grace and Tobey Maguire. Now Venom The Last Dance is being directed by Kelly Marcel, who worked on the scripts of the past two Venom films, and she and Tom Hardy will share a story credit for this third one as they did for the second movie. The cast includes Tom Hardy and Juno Temple, Chiwetel Ejiofor, and Clark Bacco. Now, Chiwetel Ejiofor, of course, played Mordo in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and 2016's Doctor Strange and 2022's Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. But before you assume he's just gonna be Mordo in this movie, nah, -uh. Sony is okay to recast MCU actors, like Aaron Taylor Johnson's playing Kraven in the Sony Universe after he played Quicksilver in the MCU in Avengers Age of Ultron. Scooper Daniel RPK claimed that Jude Four is actually playing Orwell Taylor, a villain who appeared alongside Eddie Brock and Venom Lethal the Protector No. 1 in 1992, a former general who leads an armored vigilante group called The Jury, which is tasked with killing Eddie Brock and Venom. For what it's worth, the production title for Venom 3 was posted around its shooting locations in Spain under the word Orwell. Maybe it's just a bit of irony, but Andy Serkis directed the second movie, Venom Let There Be Carnage, and the reason he couldn't come back to direct the third movie is that he's directing the film Animal Farm, an adaptation of George Orwell's novella. Venom Let There Be Carnage ended with the deaths of serial killer Cletus Cassidy and his lover Shriek, with Venom gobbling up what was left of the Carnage symbiote and biting off Cletus's head. But Detective Mulligans, played by Stephen Graham, was left behind with an implied symbiote infection, his eyes glowing blue as he growled the word monsters. And in the comics, Patrick Mulligan becomes the symbiote character of Toxin. We'll see if this comes back. But Venom The Last Dance's budget is just $110 million, which, you know, is a pretty big budget, but moderate compared to other superhero movies. It's just not the kind of budget for a massive multiverse spectacle film the way No Way Home was. Like, I don't expect a ton of cameos and like big expensive glowing riffs in reality, but I do think this third Venom film might feature references in other more subtle forms like inside of Eddie's mind, audio sound bites, archive footage flashes that are all just inside of Eddie's brain as it is suddenly filled with visions and nightmares of alternate Eddies and alternate Venoms. I don't think the title of The Last Dance is meant to reflect like a comic book movie musical the way Joker, Falia Du seems to be going for, or like the goofy musical planet of Aladna in the Marvels, but rather Eddie could just learn that a symbiote's attachment to a person is a sacred Clintar relationship that doesn't really have a word in human speech, but the closest concept that we have for it is what we consider to be a dance. Like, think about it. Instead of it being truly parasitic between this Eddie and this Venom, both of them over these films have kind of had to learn to both lead and follow to create kind of a harmonious bond with each other. The fact that Tom Hardy's Eddie and his Venom have this friendly anti-hero lethal protector companionship, this dance you could call it, is what makes them break the canon of all other Venoms. They are, in effect, The Last Dance. So I don't think The Last Dance is a Donna Summers thing, though we may hear that needle drop. I definitely don't think it's a Chicago Bulls reference because a guy wearing a Golden State Warriors shirt would never. And I don't think it means that Venom 3 is going to be like Venom Folia Trois. But I do think it's going to reveal something about Eddie's place within the Spider-Verse and really why he just doesn't fit in it and how that's okay. But I want to hear from you. What do you think Venom The Last Dance means? Subscribe to New Rockstars, follow me at EA Boss. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.